Bibles to Psalm 103. Those of you who were faithful to remain behind. In Psalm 103, David wrote this psalm. And when I read it, you're going to say, oh, I've heard this psalm before and I've read it many times. Well, so have I. But when the Lord takes you back to something that you think you already know, He's going to show you something you thought you knew. And what the Lord showed me uh, this past week during study time and prayer time, is He says, now, when you read this psalm, get in into David's head or his mind and get where he's at. And then when the psalm goes forward, you're going to glean understanding from it. But you got to put yourself in David's place. And how do you do that? Well, if you read the psalm, David is going to give an indication of where he's at in life. And so he says in Psalm 103.1, he starts off and he says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So now, you know, the, the spirit, you know, we are a spirit. And the spirit in David is saying, David, he's telling his mind or his soul, his will and emotions, you praise the Lord. Now, why would we have to tell our minds to praise the Lord? Because our minds are under duress or stress or under pressure, and it's being affected by that pressure. And so he says, soul, and, and if I can inject this, soul, you stop being overcome with all of the hardships and all the problems you're dealing with, and you start praising the Lord because he's your way out of this. And so you start praising the Lord, soul, because the spirit man, he has no problem praising the Lord. It's the soul, your mind, will, and emotions that struggles because it has to see all the stuff going around, around it, and it's not overly joyed to praise the Lord when there's hardships. So you praise the Lord, and, and, and while you're praising soul, remember all the benefits of, of the Lord Jesus. Now, of course, Jesus hadn't been born but it's God, and he says, remember the benefits of walking with the Lord and serving the Lord. And so sometimes you have to speak to yourself. You know, before people used to make fun of you for talking to yourself. Now it's okay. And besides that, if you have one of them goofy phones that goes in your ear and you're talking, first time I seen that, I thought, man, I better cast the devil out of that guy because he's talking to somebody then I realize he's got a phone in his ear and he's talking. So now we can do that anytime. I see people in their cars talking all the time. I, uh, Kathy pulled up on a drive. I looked out and she's in there in, her, in the car by herself talking. Then I realize she has Bluetooth. Bluetooth. Bluetooth sounds like something a dog would get. <laughs> you know? But she's talking to old Bluetooth. And that happens to be... Uh, phone that goes through her radio and so she's talking and so we have to talk to ourselves sometimes and you got to tell yourself you start praising the Lord Be don't let these problems overwhelm you you start praising him and thanking him because remember the flesh is weak the, the spirit is strong so he says now here he says now while you're praising him I don't want you to forget all of his benefits you know, the battlefield is in the mind. And when the devil offers us hell, you know, when it brings hell into your life, we need to remind ourselves of all the benefits of being in Christ Jesus. Yes. Amen? When you're in Christ, hell's not your portion. Right. Amen. That's not your place. We don't have to allow that trash into our lives. Amen. Praise God. And then, he, and then he goes on, look at it, it says in verse 3, now he begins to list some of the benefits. Amen. Now, I know there's all kinds of benefits in the Bible, but I believe David lists the ones he's going to talk about because those are the ones that he needed. So he says in verse 3, now he's beginning to list the benefits that he knows of that he needs. God who forgives all my iniquities. Amen. All my sins. Amen. Praise God. Every one of them. 
Well, if all of your sins are forgiven, then how could God possibly oppose you? If you've got nothing in there that, that, that He's against, if all of your sins are forgiven, I mean, if all your sins are forgiven, it's just like going on a diet. I mean, all of a sudden you feel light. Because sins, sins can weigh you down. It talks about the weight of sin. Well, if all those sins are gone, there's nothing between you and God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And you don't have to do anything to forgive Him because you're not that good. God has to forgive sins. And boy, when He does, He forgets them. Amen. Praise God. I was talking to Nolan, and he was talking, we were talking about getting rid of sin. And he said, I've done some things. And I said, Nolan, you've never, there's no way you could out sin me. And I told him, took him the scriptures, how God forgives our sins, and then he forgets. Even if you try to remind him, he's got no record of it. So God, so, you know, that's just, that's just a giant weight loss right there. You got no ball and anchor around your, your ankle, your ball and chain around your ankle from sin. And then he heals all your diseases. There's nothing too hard. On the way up here, I was listening to Cap, uh, Happy Caldwell preach, and he went to the Philippines to a leper colony, and he said, the one thing those people lack is someone who loves them. You know, who wants to, who's, it's very hard to love people when their ears have fallen off, their noses have fallen off, their skin's fallen off, and that, that disease is eating their skins away. And so they just sit there and stare, and, and Happy Caldwell, he said he was filled with the compassion of the Lord. He laid his hands on the leper, and the leper just began to weep because when he did that, he knew he was loved. And God heals all our diseases. Thank you, Lord. Somebody's being healed right now in their knee. You, you fell and scraped your knee. It could be someone here. It could be in the children's church. But someone's knee is being healed right now in Jesus' name. The bruise is leaving, the skin's coming back, the pain's going away, and by Jesus' stripes you're healed. All your diseases, all your injuries. And then in verse 4, he redeems your life from destruction. If, if you study that out, that destruction there is the grave. We're not going to the grave. Our bodies are. Amen. But we're not. Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. The minute you leave that body, you're with the Lord Jesus Christ. You're redeemed from the grave. You ain't going down there. Hallelujah. It's, you know, the earth suit goes in there, but the spirit man goes up to be with the Lord. Hallelujah. And then he crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. That loving kindness there is the favor of God. Now see, David here is evidently going through some things and he had to tell his soul to start praising the Lord so he could remember all the benefits of being, having a covenant with the Lord that all of his sins were forgiven, all his diseases were healed, he has favor with God and men, and then he has mercy. And so now I know there's more benefits, but these are the ones that David needed, and these are the ones he had to get his soul in tune with and start receiving what the Lord said. And then the last one there, verse 5, who satisfies your mouth with good things so your, your, uh, your, that your youth is renewed like an eagle. Glory to God. He gives us what we need to keep our spirit fresh. Now, I know this outward body, you know, I, I know that they're, uh, they're corrupt and they're fading away and nothing we can do about that except rejoice because we're redeemed from the grave. But inside, we are strong. That's what Paul said, when I'm weak and I'm strong, it's from the inside. Our strength comes from the inside, from the spirit man. Praise God. And so God is sees to it that he gets your spirit strong. And so that you can believe for those things that he has for you and walk in them. Amen. Glory to God. So, so David had to remind his soul in his life to not forget about the benefits of having a covenant with the Lord. So that brings me to the title of this morning's message. 
Membership has its privileges. Amen. Being a member of God's, of Christ's body has its benefits. It's got privileges. Well, you guys just think you're privileged, don't you? Hallelujah. Yes, amen. Glory to God. Now, you can't read Psalm 103 without reading Psalm 68. So let's go back to 68 there, and then we'll, we'll go to the New Testament for a while. In Psalm 68 and verse 19, this is, this is David still writing, and he says, Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits. Amen. Amen. Daily, even the God of our salvation. Selah, in other words, pause and think about that. Yes. Every day we can have the benefits that David was talking about and more. David just listed the ones that he needed at the time. Praise God. So these benefits come to us daily. But some people say, well, not blessing me. That's because you forgot his benefits or you've never been taught what they were. Praise God. So when you're faced with a situation and you have to deal with it, what should you do? You tell your soul to not forget the benefits because whatever those benefits are, they'll cover your situation. Glory to God. Praise God. So membership has its privileges. Now, let's go ahead. I, let's go to, head, head to head, Hebrews chapter 2. I was praying and, and the Lord gave me that little bit. And then I kind of hit a wall and I said, well, Lord, where are you going with this? And I just pray and, and keep pressing in and following the Lord. You know, he is a great leader. And he, and he wasn't even elected either. In Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, that's you and I, Jesus also himself likewise took part of the same, he became a human being, that through death, his death, he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Now, we know that Jesus destroyed the devil because the Bible says so. God prophesied that in the book of Genesis. He prophesied over the devil, and he said, the seed of this woman is going to bruise your head or destroy the authority you took from my man, and it's going to come a time he's going to bruise your head. Well, this is, pro this is prophecy fulfilled. Jesus destroyed the devil. Amen. And he bruised his head, took his authority. And yet people are still giving the devil his due. Now why is that? Because even though the devil is destroyed and he cannot do what he says he can do, he still talks smack. He still talks as if he is an authority figure. He talks as if he has power and he's a liar. Jesus destroyed him. He cannot do anything that he says he can do. Praise God. He can't do it because Jesus destroyed him. Amen. When, um, I don't want to get too ahead of our, I don't know. When, when Joe McCroskey and Jerry Seville went to Africa, uh, I think they were in Kenya, and they were asked to come back into a village back in the bush. You've heard Joe tell the story. And they had to drive back there. And all along, the devil kept telling them, you are not coming back from this assignment. And when they got back into that village, there was a young man that was chained to a tree, and he was demon-possessed. You don't see this kind of demon possession in the United States. But in those other countries, it's pretty rampant. And so this man was chained there. And when Joe and, and uh, Brother Jerry got there, there was a witch doctor in the village. And he had these little black dolls, and he would poke them with a pin or a needle, and the village people would scream out in pain because they believed he had that power. But when he had the two white dolls of, of uh, Joe McCroskey and Jerry Seville, and he'd, he'd get in front of the people and poke them with the pin... Brother Jerry and Joel would laugh. <laughs> yeah. 
And, that, and they, they said, what's, what's going on here? Because somebody knew their benefits and someone didn't have the benefits. And so uh, the devil could not impose his will on those, on Jerry and Joe, because they knew better. Praise God. So the devil has been destroyed. Amen. But people act as if he still has power and authority. I know that when, I, I can't s state specific matters, but I believe when Mandy was teaching the kids, the kids had this impression, this idea, that God and the devil were equal in power. Am I right about that, man, or wrong? Yeah. Because yeah. They, they didn't know any better. Praise God. Now that you know better, then why even listen to the devil? Well, you know, all this stuff happens to everybody. No, it doesn't. I know people that bad things don't happen to, because that's where not where their faith is. Praise God. Okay, so um, when so what, when Jesus destroyed the works of the devil, we have to remember the benefits of that destruction. Now, uh, the Lord spoke this to me this morning. The devil can only do what, what he can convince you he can do. Amen. The devil can only do what he can convince you to do. Well, if you don't listen to him, now you can do, you know, you know how to ignore people. Do the same thing with the devil. I, uh, Kenneth Coltman was teaching one day, and he went. I told you the story before. He went to the Lord, and he says, "Lord, I want to. I, I hate the devil, and I want to hurt him. What can? What's? What's the best I can do? What's the most I can do to hurt him?" And the Lord says, "Well, Kenneth, just do him like you do me." He says, "How's that, Lord?" He says, "Don't listen to a word he says." He's, he, he talks as if he can do what he says he can do, but he can't. But in your mind, that's where the battlefield is. He starts putting those thoughts, and that's when you have to stop and remember your benefits. And one of the benefits here of ours is that the devil in our life has been destroyed. I got no place and no time for no devil. Praise God. Now, he still comes around. But I've grown enough spiritually to recognize where he's sneaking about. He creeps. He's a creep. True story. Go ahead to Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 24. But this, this man, Jesus, because he continueth forever hath an unchangeable priesthood. Therefore he's able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Now why is the devil, or why is Jesus interceding for us if the devil has been destroyed? Because the devil can sound very convincing. Amen. Especially to an unrenewed mind. If your mind has not been renewed to recognize the voice of evil and to recognize what he said is a lie, he can convince you. He can scare you. I've, I've been there. I, the, get scared over the stupidest things. When I was growing up in the Catholic Church, and thank God for Catholics, there was a... Uh, I don't, I don't want to go too far deep into it, but the Virgin Mary allegedly appeared to three kids in Fatima in Portugal and gave them this secret prayer, this special prayer we call the Rosary. And then the, the, the Catholic, I guess it was the Pope, declared that if all Catholics would say this Rosary every day, it would stop Russia from putting nuclear bombs on us. Well, I seen the pictures of those nuclear bombs, and I was scared. I was scared, so I prayed the rosary. Well, my, God heard my prayers because we hadn't been nuked yet. <laughs> yeah. 
But the devil can sound very convincing. Because he, he's been defeated, but he don't believe it. He don't accept it. <laughs> right. So the devil comes to tempt us with lies. And Jesus is interceding for us the whole time. He's praying for us. Now, I shared this a while back, and I know that sometimes you've got to share things more than once before people get it, and not because you're not intelligent, because you are. It's just that sometimes revelation has to be pushed in a little bit deeper. But when I heard this, that the Lord ever liveth to make intercession for us, I, be, I said, Lord, I would love to hear you pray for me. I would love to hear what this intercession sounds like. If, if, you, if you're alive forever and you're interceding for me and all the people, I'd sure like to know what you're praying about. And I, I just, you know, I didn't know if that was possible. And even if I could eave, uh, eavesdrop on one of his conversations, if I couldn't find it in the Bible, I couldn't share it. I can't share things that are not in the scriptures. But the Lord says, he just told me one day, he says, if you want to hear how I intercede, just go read my prayer. And I says, that's right. You prayed for us. Let's look at that prayer. Let's go to John chapter 17 and verse 1. John 17, 1. These words spoke Jesus, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hours come glorify thy son and thy son may glorify thee. Look at verse 9. Then he says, I pray for them. He's talking about his disciples. I pray not for the world. Why? Because membership has its privileges. Amen. But for them which thou have given me, for they are yours. So Jesus does not intercede for everyone. Membership has its privileges. Amen. He's praying for you and I. Now we don't know that yet because in here he's only praying for his disciples. But he's praying, interceding. And so when the Lord says, now if you read this, you'll know how I interceded for you. Because this prayer did not expire when he died. It did not expire when he was raised from the dead. Jesus prayed this prayer and the Father is still honoring it. I love this prayer. This to me is the Lord's prayer. Well, what about our Father who art in heaven? That's the disciples' prayer. Now if you want to call it the Lord's prayer... You can keep your salvation. It won't matter. Amen. But this really is the Lord's Prayer. This is what he prayed. So if you read this, now you'll know how he's interceding for us. So let's come up to verse 14. He says, Father, I have given them your words, the things you told me I told them, and the world has hated them because they're not of the world even as I'm not of the world. I pray... Do you think Jesus gets his prayers answered? Yeah. Just, like, just like our, the prayers Jesus gave us, Father's going to answer them just as well. So Jesus is praying, he says, I pray not that thou shouldst take them out the world, but you should keep them from the evil. Amen. Huh, now just, didn't we just read the devil's been destroyed? And now he's praying to keep them from the evil? They're not, um, they're not of the world, he's not of the world. Um, they're not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. So what's this evil that he's talking about? I'll tell you what it is. It's the, the evil that's in the world is what the devil has convinced men to practice. That's good. There is a man, and there's no doubt about this in my mind or my heart, the, the, and there's a bunch of these, but that leader of North Korea is demon-possessed. That guy is so paranoid, and he's using fear to oppress and to keep those people under, uh, uh, under the hand of, of communism and all that stuff, and away from God. He has got his people, in fact, in the past week, he has put his country and his army on a preemptive nuclear strike against South Korea and the United States. And he's got his people now in a panic mode because he's got them convinced the United States and South Korea are going to nuke them. And so he's got all these so-called nukes and hydrogen bombs ready to go. That guy's so paranoid. 
The United States does not invade countries that, that, are, uh, that just mind their own business. And, and South Korea does not want any more war, and yet he's convinced everybody's out to kill him. He, you know what he's full of? Terror. I guess you would call those guys terrorists. Same with that guy in Iran. They hate Israel. And they have to be wiped off the face of the earth, no matter what. And yet, you know, if you think about it, Iran could be one of the most prosperous nations in the world with all the tourist attractions and all the oil and stuff. But because of their hatred for Israel, they're willing to sacrifice all of that in order to have it. That's the, that's the evil that we have to contend with, the evil that the devil put in certain men. Well, see, the problem is we're, they're fighting those men when we need to be fighting the devil who's controlling them. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, let's go on. Look at verse 17. He says, sanctify them through thy truth. Your word is truth. The word sanctify means to separate. Let me, let me give you a little Bible secret, and you don't have to keep it as a secret any longer. Here is how you separate yourself from fear and evil. The truth. Amen. The truth. Amen. Everything the devil says he can do, he can't do. Why? Because Jesus put his foot on his head and squeezed all the pus out of his brain. Is that graphic enough? <laughs> He's finished. He can't do anything. But he talks a good game. He's, he's kind of like, if I may say, like a politician. Read my lips. No new taxes. Oops. What's the last one we heard? The middle class will not pay one dime in taxes. Oops. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, that's, I'm Jerry Lamp, and I approve of this message. <laughs> Amen. No, I didn't mention any names. <laughs> Praise God. And, and, and then, as you have sent me into the world, anointed and with a vision, if you want to read his vision, it's over in Luke chapter 4, even so have I, I have also sent them into the world. So we are just as equipped in this world as Jesus was. We have the same anointing, the same Holy Ghost, the same in power. In fact, he says, the works I've done, ha, huh, you'll do greater than these. Because I go to my Father, my time on this earth is done, yours is now. And for their sakes, Father, I sanctify or separate myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. The truth is what separates you from the evil that's in this world. It's what separates you from fears. Praise the Lord, O my soul, instead of... Well, I'm afraid. Well, that's why you need to praise the Lord, soul. Now shut up and praise the Lord. But I'm afraid. Shut up. Praise the Lord. All right. Praise you, Lord. Sound like Don Knox. Oh, the ghost of Mr. Chicken. And look at verse 20. I love, verse 20 is my favorite one. Father, neither do I pray for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Amen. Man, I take great comfort in knowing that Jesus prayed for me, and he prayed for you. So when he ever liveth to make intercession, you want to know what he says, read the whole thing, the whole chapter of John 17. It's the prayer of intercession. It's the prayer he prayed for us. And the Father is honoring that. So your place in the kingdom is determined by what you believe. How deep do you want to go into God's kingdom? Amen? How far do you want to go? What level do you want to go? How do you get into the kingdom? You've got to be translated into the kingdom of, by God's dear Son. When you get born again, He translates you into the kingdom of, of, of His dear Son. You're in there. Now, most people are satisfied just to get in. I was. I just wanted in. I didn't realize that you can go further. And then I got filled with the Holy Spirit. And then I got healed. And then I started to believe the scriptures that they used to get me in those places. And every time I believed them, became a doer of the word, I got in deeper and deeper into the kingdom. And the deeper you go, the more you realize all the benefits of being in the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and don't forget the benefits. Then I come to find out 
that all the stuff my old church told me about poverty was under the curse. And I come to find out God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. He's pleased when you get well. Yeah, anybody have a problem pleasing the Lord? Praise God. And so every time you believe that, you get deeper and deeper into the kingdom. And the deeper you get into the kingdom, less dependent you are of the world. <coughs> Praise God. Are you still here? Yes. Praise God. We're getting, we're getting to the end here pretty quick. So your place in the kingdom is determined by what you believe. Let's go back to John's Gospel, chapter 15 and verse 13. John 15 and 13. Listen to what Jesus says. Greater love has no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You, this is what he says, you are my friends. Now there's some people that if they're not too deep in the kingdom, they'd struggle with that term. How can anybody be a friend of God? We're just a bunch of servants and do what he says. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. In other words, you're going to have to, to do the things that cause you to be a friend of the Lord. There's people that if they're going to be your friend, they're going to have to do certain things that you approve of. If you don't approve of them, they're not going to be your friends. You don't judge them. Amen? And you know, if, if, a, if a guy wants to drink whiskey every day and, and have recreational drugs, we're not going to be friends. Amen. I'd, that lifestyle's gone. <laughs> look at this, and then look, look at verse 15. Henceforth, I call you not servants. Now read this carefully. I'll point it out to you. For the servant knows not what, the Lord, what his Lord does, but I've called you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. So when you obey the word, when you do the truth, which is to your benefit, Jesus died to get you the truth, then he calls you his friends. A friend of God. But don't we have a song, Mr. Praise and Worship, Peter, I am a friend of God. See, if you'd have been listening to the Lord, you'd have done that song today. But no, you, you did other good ones. <laughs> Praise and Worship was excellent. I'm just teasing with you, because we're friends. I think I, we are. So Jesus, remember he says, you do what I tell you to do. He reserves revelation for his friends. Why? Because membership has its privileges. Now notice here, he says, for the servant knows not what his Lord doeth. Notice he says, he didn't say, Jesus did not say, my servants. He said, the servant. So he's speaking in general terms. I mean, let me give, I was, I was Lord, show me an example. Donald Trump has a lot of people in his house who serve him. He's got cooks and cleaners and butlers and, and uh, cup bearers and God knows what else he's got in his penthouse. Praise, more power to him. I have no problem with that. But do you suppose he sits down with his house cleaner or his butler or his cook and discusses with them multi-million dollar business schemes? No. A servant does not know what his master is doing. But Jesus explains things to us. He tells us things all the time. And when you, when you get a revelation, you think, oh, my Lord. And you think, how, why would the Lord share that with little old me? Because I'm his friend. Amen. And now if I was a servant, then I would not know what he's doing. But I am a friend. Amen. I am a friend who chooses to serve him. Thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Servants don't know nothing. But membership has its privileges. Praise God. And that's why, you know, Kenneth Copeland always said... He says, some of you people want to know what's going, to, going on. You read the newspaper. He said, if you want to know what's gone, go to church on Sunday. Lord will show you. He'll tell you what's coming and what's going down the pipe. And you think about it. What is the world expecting right now? The people are they're in fear because the economy's bad. 
We're invaded by uh, refugees that we don't know their background, and, and everything is, is, you know, the morality has just about gone out, and people think the United States is shot. But the Christians who are pressed into the kingdom have a different outlook and a different picture. And, and the prophets keep telling us God's not done with the United States yet. That's right. yeah. That's right. He's not done with us. He's, he's, there is a blessing to a country who sends all those missionaries all over the world to convert people to Christ. Yes. Praise God. You know what a friend is by definition? It is one who is attached to another by affection. One who is attached to another by affection. So when we obey the Lord, it creates an affection or a, a, a intimacy with Him. Oh, I'm so glad you did what I, what I said. And Jesus was also subject to what the Father said. Praise God. All right, we got one more scripture before we do tithes and offerings. In Matthew chapter 11 and verse 25. Matthew eleven twenty five. At that time, Jesus answered the Father and says, I thank you, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hid these things, these revelations, from the wise and the prudent, but you revealed them to babes. The wise and the prudent are people who are very intelligent, and there's, I know there's some intelligent people in here. You know, I, I congratulated Nolan because he's a, he's a uh, what do you, what's his title? You don't know either? CPA, Certified Public Accountant. And it takes a lot to get there, doesn't it, Jeff? It's a lot of study. And I said, Nolan, you are a very intelligent person. And he said, well, I wish my mom and dad would say that about me. <laughs> no. I says, your mom and dad love you. He says, I know they do. And I've never felt so close to them as I do right now. Praise That's God. what he said. He, and I, I says, you got good parents. He says, yes, I do. Praise it was a good meeting. So God, he says, you hid these things from the people who are really intelligent. But even a person who has a low IQ fall in the same category because they want physical evidence to support what's being said. But, but Jesus says, the things that we are saying, the babes have accepted it. In other words, they don't need evidence. They just believe what you tell them. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in your sight, all things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knows the Son but the Father, neither knows any man the Father except the Son, and to he whomsoever the Son will reveal him. So a lot of folks claim to know God, but they just, but really, they just know a little bit about him, and you can, you can uh, determine a person's uh, place in the kingdom just by listening to them, not judging them, but a person will will tell you how close they are just by listening to them. When Jesus reveals the Father, it creates intimacy. It creates a friendship. See, there was a time when, to me, I was afraid of God. In fact, I didn't really like him because I was told that the only time he gave me any attention is when I did something wrong and he would punish me. I did not know anything about the love of God. I did not know anything about revelation. I, didn't, I knew he went on the cross, but I did have no idea why. And so I had no idea. But as I began to take the word of truth... It separated me from the world and that religious thinking, and I became a friend of God. Hallelujah. Me and God are buddies. Me and Jesus are buddies. Hallelujah. But I serve him because I do what he's told me to do. And that's, and that's, just, that's affection. When you tell your kids to do something and they actually do it, whew, you go, wow. And you just draw real close to them for the time being. <laughs> Praise God. Look at verse 28. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Now, who's he speaking to? The babes who will receive revelation. Why? Because membership has its privileges. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for yourselves. 
for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. No man can yoke up with Jesus without revelation. You got to know him. You know, my grandfather was a horseman from St. Louis, and he had a, a, a ranch in East Helena, and he always kept a couple of horses on the ranch. He had these couple old, these old horses, we liked them. They were plugs, but my grandfather had them trained. He would yoke them together to pull the hay wagon. He would rather leave the tractor in the barn and take them horses. And we loved riding on the, on the way with those horses. And the way he talked to them and, and, and he got them together and got them working together, they were yoked together. So one horse didn't pull the whole load. They did it too. And Jesus says, if you'll take my revelations, I'll yoke up with you. And I'll help you pull the load through this life. Amen. He never intended for you to go through this life on your own. He wants to yoke up with you. That's not talking egg yolk there. That's talking a wooden yolk that puts them together. He helps us. Praise God. When we yoke up with him, he pulls our load. He helps us pull our load. And so when you know Jesus and you invite him into your life and trust him, life gets a little bit easier. Why? Because he's helping you go through all those things that you need to go through. Seems like to me the people who have endured the, the most uh, conflict down here are going to be the ones that appreciate heaven the most. <laughs> it's so quiet up here. It's so peaceful. I've been listening to Jesse DePlanis in the morning talk about going to heaven. I could listen to that over and over. Man, that was so good this morning, how he went to heaven. It was so peaceful. Wow. Praise God. So, folks, membership has its privileges. Don't forget the benefits. Amen? Now, back in Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and lean not unto your own understanding. Believe what God says without having to figure it out in your mind. If you believe, He'll show it to you. In all your ways, not most of your ways, <clears throat> acknowledge Him, and He'll direct your paths. In other words, invite God into your situation. Lord, help me with this. I, want, I need favor. I need wisdom. He said, okay, I'll yoke up with you. And in verse 7, Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. And if you'll do this, it will be health or medicine to your stomach and moral or moral to your bones. That's moisture. So you don't have, you don't want to have, what's osteoporosis? It's brittle bones, isn't it? You don't want to have brittle bones. You want to have moisturized bones. And in verse 9, Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of your increase, so shall your barns, plural, be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. When we obey his commands, he blesses his friends. Notice there, barns. That's all your accounts, your stash, your savings account, your retirement account, your rainy day account. All those accounts are just going to be blessed. Man, I, I had no idea the Lord was so generous until we, Kathy and I started tithing and giving and obeying Him. And the blessings just keep rolling in. Praise God. They just keep, they just keep coming in. If I may say this without sounding too weird, you know, Kathy and I live on a fixed income. Whatever the church, you know, we have a, a monthly, it's all set by the board members and all that. But if we want more, then we just sow seed. Amen. We plant seed. And it's amazing what happens when you do that. Yes. Praise God. Our barns are getting filled up. Yes. Kathy was giving me, how many fish poles do you need? Well, at least one more. And I says, Kat, the Bible says he would make us plenteous in goods. You should start believing for fish poles. I don't want a fish pole. I said, well, then learn to clean fish. <laughs> Ushers, would you come forward, please, receive tithes and offerings? I love this one. This is my biggest, this is my biggest giving week. Hallelujah. Let's make this confession. I love the Lord Jesus. I love the Lord Jesus. Because he first loved me. Because he first loved me. I love to obey him. I love to obey him. And his commands are not grievous. And 
His commands are not grievous. He loves me like a friend. He loves me like a friend. His love are His blessings. His love are His blessings. I must never forget the blessings. I must never forget the blessings. I must never forget all the benefits. I must never forget all the benefits. No man can give these to me. No man can give these to me. And all my barns are filling up. And all my barns are filling up. And the need for the completion of this building. And the need for the completion of this building. And the purchase of our land is met. And the purchase of our land is met. We will never go in debt. We will never go in debt. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. God is my source. There are 70 scriptures in it. It's just so wonderful. You can get it free if you just follow in order. Okay. God is my source. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, God, you are our source. This morning, I'm recalling all the benefits, Lord, who heals all our diseases. Lord, we believe that word. And so no person in this church should have any kind of sickness or disease. Nor should they have any kind of sin weighting them down. Because you forgive all of our iniquities. The sacrifice that brought forgiveness of our iniquities with the same sacrifice that brought our healing, the same sacrifice that brought our prosperity. So Father, this is your time, Lord, to speak to us as you have spoken to the Word. I ask you to confirm the Word with signs following in Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. I lay hands on this young lady and I rebuke that that dryness in her lungs and that throat as she recuperates from that attack. I call forth the, the a cleansing and a healing in her lungs and her throat. No more coughing and hacking. No more issues or problem. I declare Kimberly sound, whole, and healed in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I see the Lord right now healing people in their pancreas. All kinds of issues in the pancreas are being healed. In the name of Jesus, I speak to those pancreases that you function the way God ordained you when you created you and put them in those bodies. Pancreases, you function perfectly in Jesus' name. You, you are in charge of regulating things. Do your job in Jesus' name. Do your job in Jesus' name. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. When Pastor began to pray for Kimberly, um, the Holy Spirit started speaking to me about bronchitis and inflamed bronchial tubes. So I speak to that now. I command all the inflammation, the swelling to go down. No more coughing fits. No more coughing at night that keeps you up. I, I speak to the lungs and I command them to function properly in Jesus' name. No more striving for breaths of air. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Somebody's ears hurt. They just ache. I, I wouldn't call it exactly an earache because it's more on the outside than it is on the inside. But the Lord is healing your ears now in Jesus' name. Oh, God. You were exposed to something. I can't see exactly what it was. Uh, maybe the wind or some sort of a, of a chemical or a soap or something. And it, it, it kind of brought an itching to the ears. Uh, not, not the scriptural kind, but a physical itching of the ears. And the Lord's healing your ears right now in Jesus' name. Somebody also, the roof of your mouth has got like a coating on it. And it's just weird. There's a coating of something. And that coating must come down right now and come off in Jesus' name. And the roof of your mouth is now healed and whole in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Thank God. You. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I speak to that person in here with sore toes. Uh, and 
thank you, Jesus. It was from wearing the wrong shoes. So I speak to that pain to go. No more inflammation in your toes. No more soreness when you take steps. I thank you, Father, right now for divine healing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody is scheduled to go take some sort of a test for advancement in your job or, or to get some sort of something, a degree or whatever. And the Lord wants you to remind you that he's with you when you take that test. He never leaves you, never forsakes you. And all those things that you have studied for, he's going to bring back to your remembrance. So take no fear over this test that you're going to do just fine. And those things that you think you might not be able to remember, he will recall those things to you when you need them. And you will be successful in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Praise God. Can you pray over my hand? Oh. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I pray for this paw now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. I speak to these tendons now, which are not in their proper place. I command them to come back into their proper place and to function the way the Lord ordained that they would serve this woman all the days of her life. Thank Hand, you be healed right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus Praise God. I, I can't feel it, but I, I sense the power of God's going into this wrist right now and affecting a cure and a healing in Jesus' name. Thank Praise God. No more discomfort, no more pain, no more restrictions in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus. Praise God. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord. Thank you. I, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we lift up Gary Bay to you, and we speak promotion into his life. We speak blessing over his family. We call any family members that have not received you, we call them saved in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for the year of the breakthrough. Restore in his family. I thank you, Lord. Father God, increase him in his giftings and his anointings here. We thank you, Lord. We speak increase over him. We thank you, Lord, for the blessing that he is to our body. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for him. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Father, I want you to bless these people mightily, holding fast the word they heard today in their hearts, never forgetting the benefits of being in Christ Jesus. And keep in remembrance that the devil has been destroyed in his works where their lives are concerned. And they are a free people. Bless them, Father, and bless everything they touch. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. All got her?